Ingenieur Stephen Austin. Hello, my name is Stephen Austin. I want to thank Father Zucchini and the Maria Voltorto Foundation for providing me with the opportunity and honor to speak with you today. Four years ago, I would have never imagined in my wildest dreams that I would be standing here today at an, inter at an international conference giving a speech about one of the most important mystics of our time. This is especially so because I was initially strongly against Maria Voltorto. About four years ago, my brother was reading Maria Voltorto. I was strongly concerned about it because I was under the impression that her writings were condemned and that she was a false mystic. This is because I had heard and read some of the all too common misinformation and falsehoods about Maria Voltorto and her writings. I was convinced that it was a false private revelation and so I energetically began researching it and compiling information into an organized report to give to my brother to try to prove to him that Maria Voltorto's writings were a false private revelation forbidden by the church and should not be read. However, upon investigating Maria Voltorto and her writings in depth and considering all the arguments both for and against it with a discerning but open mind, I discovered my initial viewpoint was wrong. I discovered that the evidence shows that her writings are not only free of error in faith and morals, and approved by a tremendous number of high-ranking, very learned, and trustworthy church authorities, but that her writings are extraordinarily beneficial for souls and unlike any other book ever written. In my research of Maria Voltorta, I became so fascinated and overjoyed that I spent hundreds of hours of research over four years learning everything I could about Maria Voltorta and her writings and compiling a very detailed ebook, which I entitled, A Summa and Encyclopedia to Maria Voltorta's Extraordinary Work. In this ebook, I incorporated information from almost every single internet website and printed source about Maria Voltorta and her writings that are available in the English language, as well as incorporating as well as incorporating information from many primary sources available in Maria Voltorta's native Italian language. I think it is fair to say that one would not likely find a more comprehensive, detailed, and honest exposition of Maria Voltorta's writings anywhere else in the English language. In my research, I was amazed at the massive amount of extraordinary proofs of the divine origin of her writings proofs which rival the proofs of the greatest approved private revelations of the church and put to shame the hundreds of false private revelations circulating around the world today. I began to realize that her writings are the most accurate, detailed, and powerful revelation about Jesus and Mary's lives ever given to mankind. These writings have absolutely transformed my life. The tremendous impact these writings have had on multitudes of priests, religious, and lay faithful around the world are unlike anything I have ever seen. In February, 2000, in February 2014, I had the opportunity to do an interview on a Christian television show where I was able to describe my personal experiences with Maria Voltorta's writings and how it has transformed my life and the lives of many other people around the world, what led me to do research on her writings and my findings. In more recent times, in March 2016, Tim Froman and I did a radio show interview with Dr. Chiffo about Voltorta and her writings on a Catholic radio program, which is known for being the most listened to show on the oldest radio station in Long Island, New York. During my research endeavors the past four years, I had the privilege of meeting and communicating with leading Voltorta researchers and promoters around the world, including two of the speakers here today, Thomas Dubay and Bruno Perrine. These people have been an indispensable help and a joy to communicate and work with. During my talk today, I want to introduce you to my ebook, the research I have done, and make known to you how you can access it so that you can read it and share it with others who might be interested. It is completely free and readily available at many places online. The goal of my ebook is to provide people with comprehensive information about Maria Voltorta and her writings and to spread her writings to people all around the world. 
My ebook has been downloaded by thousands and possibly tens of thousands around the world, and not only in English speaking countries like the United States, the United Kingdom, Australia, and New Zealand, but I've heard feedback from people in countries from just about every continent and geographic region. English is the third most spoken language in the world and the world's most common second language. And so my ebook is accessible to a tremendous number of people in the world population. This ebook contains translations of many primary source testimonies that were not previously available in English that are essential in making known key information about Volturda to these world populations, including many testimonies available in the Valtorda publishers' books and magazines, and translations of relevant Father Berti footnotes available in the Italian editions of Valtorda's work, which address critics and clarify important passages. Bruno Perrinet's publishing house in France has offered to publish my ebook as a multi volume set in multiple languages so as to further introduce my ebook and Valtorda to a broader audience. French and Italian translations are among the languages planned. I would like to briefly outline the chapters in my ebook so that you can see what is available. Note that all of you will be given a handout with the full listing of all the chapters and subchapters of my ebook. Because there are 49 subchapters, I will not have time today to present the subchapters in this presentation, but I will present the 13 main chapters. Up until recently, the English translations were still called The Poem of the Man God. Therefore, in my ebook, I use this title interchangeably with the newer title, The Gospel as Revealed to Me. The first chapter of my ebook is an introduction to the Poem of the Man God. In this chapter, I cover the history of Mira Volturda and her work, where to buy and sample her work online, and provide helpful information about the two English editions of her work. I also give information about the Volturda app and provide authoritative testimonies about her work, which are particularly well suited in introducing her work to new readers. The next chapter is entitled, Why Bother with the Poem of the Man God? What's so special about it? In this chapter, I answer these questions, as well as describe 22 unique and extraordinary features of Maria Volturda's revelations. The next chapter is entitled, Regarding Private Revelation. In this chapter, I discuss the church teaching on private revelation, including how it relates to Valtorta's revelations. I provide a detailed analysis of Valtorta and her writings according to the criteria that the church has laid out for assessing such things, and I explain why we should not ignore her private revelation. One of the biggest chapters in my ebook is Proofs of the Divine Origin of the Poem of the Man God. There are 12 subchapters of different proofs that show evidence of why, Mar why Maria Volturda's work must have been influenced by a supernatural source. These include proofs from a broad range of scientific, historical, circumstantial, and spiritual factors. One of the biggest chapters in my ebook is, oops, I'm sorry. Uh, the next chapter is about Padre Prio and Maria Volturda. It describes the testimony of a spiritual daughter of Padre Pio, that he commanded one of his spiritual children to read Valtorta's work, as well as describes the evidence and testimonies of numerous mystical experiences that occurred between Padre Pio and Maria Valtorta when they were still alive. The next chapter is entitled, The Position of the Popes, the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, and the Vatican Newspaper on the Poem of the Man God. It includes full information about these things and also includes a timeline of significant events and um, approvals relating to the canonical status of Maria Volturda's work. The next chapter contains a list of important persons who have, improved, who have approved and endorsed Volturda's work, including bishops, doctors of theology, divinity, and canon law, saints, blesseds, venerables, and servants of God, university professors, and noteworthy lay faithful. The next chapter is entitled, Critics and Arguments Against the Poem of the Man God, in answer to these arguments. This addresses and refutes 
all of the arguments commonly brought up against Maria Voltorta's work, including the placement of the first edition of her work on the Index of Forbidden Books, quotes that are taken out of context, and a plethora of other arguments and objections. This chapter also contains refutations or links to refutations of, of all of the major anti Voltorta articles in the English language. I have personally written over 450 total pages of analysis and refutations of six major anti Voltorta articles and provide links to refutations of nine other major anti Voltorta articles written by others. The next chapter is entitled how does the poem of the man god compare to the revelations of blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich and venerable Mary Vigretta's mystical city of God? This will be discussed in further detail later in this talk. The next two chapters are the seven reasons for the poem of the man god as explained by a dictation given in the poem and Maria Volturda's detailed description of Jesus, what he looked like in the effect that his divine continence had on his contemporaries. The next chapter is additional resources and reading on the poem of the man god and Maria Volturda. In this chapter, I provide information about the best resources for Volturda's work, including atlases, indexes, scripture Volturda cross-references, chapter summaries, travel guides, date timeline guides, and more. I also discuss website resources on Voltorda and her work and discuss the other writings of Maria Voltorda that are available and related recommended works. I have a chapter discussing Voltorda distributors and resellers followed by my references chapter containing over 1,100 individual endnotes for the entire work. When I began researching Voltorda four years ago, I found that there was little information available in English about the tremendous number of amazing testimonies from renowned theologians and notable personalities regarding Voltorda's work. I found merely a few scattered testimonies here and there, but nothing that was comprehensive or organized into a fully referenced and documented publication. I sought to change that with my ebook and Voltorda websites. I compiled every single testimony of important people I could find in the English language and in primary sources in Italian and provided references and complete information about each of these testimonies in my ebook. I made lists where I showcased these testimonies by different categories, such as a list of bishops, a list of saints, blesseds, and venerables, a list of professors, etc. These lists do not include everyone who could possibly be added to these lists. I only included those clerics and lay faithful that I could personally find so far in publications printed in the English language and a number of publications in Italian. However, even though these lists are not all encompassing and comprehensive, they give a good indication of the massive approval of her work by trustworthy and notable persons. As a result of the findings of my research, I can, I can provide you with the following facts. At least 27 bishops have approved, endorsed, or praised Valtorta's work, bishops representing 11 different countries. Those who have approved, endorsed, or praised the gospel as revealed to me include Pope Pius XII, four cardinals, 14 archbishops, nine regular bishops, 23 extremely learned clerics or doctors of theology, divinity, or canon law, seven members or consultants of the Holy Office or Congregation for the Causes of Saints, seven saints, blesseds, venerables, or servants of God, 16 university professors, and two famous television show hosts and media personalities. Every authentic private revelation in the history of the church has had unique features, graces, and knowledge associated with it. Each mystic, each authentic apparition, each miracle, each private revelation had a particular purpose and had unique features. So too does Maria Voltorda's private revelations from heaven have a special purpose and unique features. 
I, I outlined 22 of these unique features in my ebook. I don't have time to cover all of them in this speech, but I will point out 11 of them now. When it comes to revelations about our Lord's and Our Lady's life, Maria Volturta stands unique in the history of the great mystics. It is needless to say that Maria Volturta's revelations are greater than previous revelations in its vast scope and in its detail. From 1943 to 1951, Volturta produced over 15,000 handwritten pages and 122 notebooks. Her total writings include a series of almost 700 visions of Jesus' earthly life with Mary, the apostles, and many of his contemporaries, about 800 dictations from Jesus, and around 300 other revelations from God the Father, the Holy Spirit, and various angels and saints. The gospel as revealed to me is the longest, most vivid, and most true to life revelation of our Lord's and Our Lady's life ever given to the church with its almost 4,200 printed pages of visions and descriptions of the gospel. Approximately 98.5% of all the gospel passages in the canonized scriptures that relate the lives of Jesus and Mary have been, have been described in unprecedented detail in the gospel as revealed to me in addition to an abundance of previously unrecorded events. The gospel writers all combined recorded much abbreviated accounts of events occurring on, on only 141 days of Jesus' public ministry, which is approximately 12% of the total days of his public ministry. The gospel as revealed to me contains visions covering approximately 500 days of Jesus' public ministry which is approximately 42% of the total days of his public ministry. Her work describes in detail 179 miracles Jesus performed, only 30 of which are mentioned in the canonized gospels, and it gives 97 parables in full, most of which, is, uh, most of which are pages long, only 39 of which are summarized in the canonized gospels. The English translation of the gospel as revealed to me contains about 650 visions of the life of our Lord and Our Lady in its approximately 4,200 pages. And many experts have verified that it does not contain any significant errors, mix-ups, or mistakes, nor is a single person, place, or thing out of place, even though it includes 500 plus personalities, 350 plus named locations, 950 quotations and references to 40 Old Testament books in Jesus' speeches, a newly proposed chronological arrangement and dating system of the Gospels, and a vast amount of geographical, climatic, agricultural, historical, astronomical, and cartographical information, which authorities in these fields have verified the accuracy of with appropriate astonishment. The gospel as revealed to me resolves many problems in the gospel accounts, which scholars have struggled with for years, including apparent contradictions between the different gospel accounts and apparent errors or inconsistencies within the same gospel account. And it furthermore, and it furthermore corrects certain misunderstandings and translation errors that have been perpetuated throughout the centuries. The gospel as revealed to me contains unusually profound knowledge and depth in the theological, exegetical, mystical, and mirological fields, which many world-renowned trustworthy theologians say exceed anything they have ever read. The gospel as, re the gospel as revealed to me gives an unprecedentedly, unprecedentedly complete understanding of Jesus' ministry in the Holy Land, including knowledge of the cycles of his travels into different regions, detailed knowledge about the hundreds of cities, villages, and geographical sites in Palestine he visited, and maps that accurately account for each place he visited in the order he actually visited them. The gospel as revealed to me gives an unprecedented insight into Jesus, Mary, and over 500 of Jesus' contemporaries, many previously known and many previously unknown. These contemporaries include people of Jewish, Roman, Greek, Philistine, and Samaritan nationalities. The gospel as revealed to me 
gives an unprecedented insight into the political, religious, economic, social, and familial situation, as well as the dress of the ancient Jewish, Samaritan, and Roman peoples. Valtorta's visions are so accurate and detailed that besides archeology, span scholars are even finding that it is a tremendous aid in the fields of history and ethnology. Even from just a literary point of view, the gospel as revealed to me shines forth as a profoundly entertaining novel worthy of a Shakespeare or a Manzoni. Millions of people read fictional novels just for fun, whether it be Shakespeare, Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, or countless other literary options. I dare say that few books can exceed the gospel as revealed to me, even just for its literary and entertainment value. This private revelation provides amazing insight into something that we would probably never imagine we would ever know. Information in the gospel has revealed to me has enabled university professors and ancient calendar specialists to date almost every event in the canonized gospels down to the year, month, part of the month, and even sometimes the day. In addition to this, its contributions enable a more perfect calendrical understanding of the fulfillment of the 70-week messianic prophecy of Daniel. Tom Dubay and Dr. Liberato De Caro will be talking more about this at this conference. Maria Voltorta's visions of Christ's passion, as recorded in the Gospel as revealed to me, perfectly match detailed findings on the miraculous Shroud of Turin that recent modern scientific tests have revealed decades after her writings were published. This is further confirmation that her visions are accurate and come from a divine origin. Furthermore, a dictation in her writings from Jesus foretold something amazing about the Vela Veronica, which Maria Voltorta could not have known apart from a supernatural inspiration, and which has been scientifically proven for the first time decades after her death. Blessed Gabriel Allegra, who is shown in the picture over there, um, of, who is a very um, learned and world-renowned exegete, theologian, and missionary priest. And he wrote about Maria Voltorta's work, quote, Comparison with other works. Whoever starts out to read the poem of the man God with an honest mind and with commitment can well see for himself the immense distance that exists between the poem and the New, Test New Testament Apocrypha, especially the Infancy Apocrypha and the Assumption Apocrypha. And he can also notice what distance there is between this work and that of Venerable Catherine Emmerich, Mary of Regretta, etc. In the writings of these latter two visionaries, it is impossible not to sense the influence of third persons, an influence which it seems to me must, on the contrary, be absolutely excluded from our poem. To be convinced of this, it suffices to make a comparison between the vast and sure doctrine, theological, biblical, geographical, historical, topographical, which crowds every page of the poem, and the same material, material in the other visionary works mentioned above. The most vol voluminous, frequently read, and well-known mystics of, of historical visions of Jesus and Mary's lives include Maria Voltorta, Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, Venerable Mary Vergreta, and Teresa Newman. Some of the most frequently asked questions Catholics have when examining such mystics and their revelations are, how are the works of these mystics different? How do you explain the real or apparent contradictions between the writings of these mystics? How historically and scientifically accurate are the written record of the visions and dictations of these mystics? With one's limited time, which mystics' writings should you read, and which writings are the most important in and for our time? I did extensive research into all of these questions and discussed them in detail in my ebook in the chapter entitled, How Does Maria Voltorta's Work Compare to the Revelations of Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich and Venerable Mary of Regretta's Mystical City of God? This chapter has four subchapters, and the titles of these subchapters are How Maria Voltorta's Revelations and the Transcription of Them into a Written Format Has Been Uniquely Preserved from Error to a Very High Degree and how most other mystics' revelations and their transcription were not preserved from error to the same degree. 
a, a discussion on real or apparent contradictions between the different mystics. How Miravaltorta's revelations are being proven by science to a degree much greater than most, if not all, previous mystics of the church. How, in many respects, Miravaltorta's revelations are greater than most previous mystics' revelations and are especially suited for our time. We don't have the time to cover these topics in detail in this talk. I could probably give a whole talk on each subchapter. However, I refer people to my ebook for complete details. If you cannot read English, Bruno's publishing house will eventually offer an Italian translation of a multi volume printing of my ebook. And one of these volumes will cover these topics in detail. In the case of Maria Voltorta, I believe that God intended for her visions to be historically accurate, even down to the smallest details. And I believe that he guided and safeguarded the recording of these visions in such a way as to preserve the recording into written format from error to a very high degree. It is significant that Maria Voltorta read Anne Catherine Emmerich's description of the Passion of Jesus and identified dozens of errors. She also received a dictation from Jesus where he explained to her how Brentano ruined much of the written account of Emmerich's visions. These comments of Voltorta are in my ebook and are also published in Italian in a book by the publisher of Maria Voltorta's works. In the case of Venerable Mary of Agreda, it is a well-known fact that her spiritual directors commanded her to burn her first two writings of the mystical city of God and then she was commanded to rewrite her entire work 18 years after she received her original visions. It is significant that Voltorta received a dictation from our Lord where he confirmed that Agreda's third and final work, the one that has come down to us in history, for several reasons which he explained, was no longer accurate in the descriptive part, but was corrupted with human elements that made it erroneous, deformed, and essentially ruined it. But he said that the part containing the instruction that the Spirit provided, it was still illumined by God, and these teachings remained the same as the original work and were not corrupted. The evidence shows that Maria Voltorta's revelations stand as the most trustworthy and authoritative when it comes to historic visions of the lives of Jesus and Mary. In fact, I would go so far as to say that Maria Voltorta's revelations are the standard by which you can measure the degree of accuracy and credibility of the written record of, histor of similar historic visions of our Lord's and Our Lady's life, which are attributed to previous mystics. But what is particularly amazing is the incredible correspondence and exact agreement between Maria Voltorta's writings with things that are undeniably authentic and trustworthy, namely the canonized scriptures of the Holy Bible and the miraculous relics of our Lord, including the Shroud of Turin and Veronica's Veil. There are humble, honest souls of goodwill who would embrace Jesus' revelations to Valtorta if they knew that it is permissible for them to read it and that it has been declared by trustworthy, competent church authorities to be free from error in faith and morals. Part of my research, ebook, and apostolate work involves defending Valtorta against attacks, falsehoods, misinformation, and ignorance by anti Valtorta critics and articles so that honest, humble souls of goodwill can know the truth about this revelation and how beneficial it is for their souls. My ebook and the Maria Voltorta's Readers Group website, of which I am the webmaster, contains links to refutations of just about every major anti Voltorta article in the English language written by established organizations or important persons, priests, or religious orders. Some refutations are written by others and some by myself. As is evident from examining these refutations, there hasn't been a single serious argument against the victim soul Maria Voltorta and her writings that hasn't been thoroughly analyzed and refuted by using common sense, proper theological and methodological analysis, and consultation of the readily available extensive writings and scholarly theological footnotes on Voltorta's work done by renowned professors at pontifical universities, 
doctors of theology, divinity, or canon law, pre-Vatican II consultants to the Holy Office and the Sacred Congregation for the Causes of Saints, and the numerous bishops who have written positively about her work after examining it. In my ebook, I also clear up the controversies regarding the first edition of Valtorta's work being placed on the Index of Forbidden Books and why it was. I explain in detail the present canonical status of her writings and how and why the pre-Vatican II and post-Vatican II magisterium have since both explicitly given permission for the Catholic faithful to read her work and how numerous bishops have given imprimaturs to parts of or the entirety of her writings. Um, I am answering and refuting all serious objections, old and new, and I demonstrate that her work is not only free of error in faith and morals, but is extraordinarily unique, is desperately needed in today's world, is highly beneficial for souls, and is an important part of the church renewal in coming decades, in particular after the coming prophecy chastisements foretold by Voltorda, Sister Lucia Fatima, and other approved mystics complete their full course. God works all things out for the good, and I and many others believe that God will use the opposition Valtorta's work has received to make its eventual triumph all the greater. Pope St. Pius X said, God's works have no fear of opposition. Opposition implants them more deeply. The same has happened with Valtorta's writings. The more that anti valtorticals articles are written and exposed and refuted, the more the orthodoxy and greatness of Valtorta's revelation shine forth and her work becomes more known, particularly when the attempted refuta refutations are very flawed, hypocritical, and weak, such as many of the anti-Valtorta articles that have been refuted in the English language. There is a notable dictation and prophecy which our Lord told Maria Valtorta in the notebooks about how his work will not perish despite this, the opposition of some members of his church. Our Lord said when reassuring Valtorta about the opposition from some during her day, quote, no, the work the gospel has revealed to me has not perished, though men have perfectly served Satan's intentions to make it perish. I tell you, it has not perished. It cannot perish. I and my mother watch over it. They will perish those who protected it badly and judged badly, but the work is not perishing. Men may prevail with their impure sentiments, but cannot destroy the work of God. Punishment will befall those who have sinned in sin, but the work does not sin, and you have not sinned, therefore it shall not perish. Antonio Sochi agrees. Sochi is a leading Italian journalist, TV show host, author, and public intellectual in Italy. He is well known among many English-speaking Catholics um, for many of his books, one of them being The Fourth Secret of Fatima, which is one of the most prominent books about Fatima, in particular, The Third Secret of Fatima, in recent times. Recently, Antonio Sochi wrote an article about the gospel as revealed to me that was originally published in an Italian newspaper and which he also published on his blog on April 7, 2012 in which he highly praises it, saying, quote, For 20 years, after having laboriously stumbled through trying to read hundreds of biblical scholars' volumes, I can say that, with the reading of the work of Valtorta, 200 years of Enlightenment-based, idealistic, and modernist chatter about the gospel and about the life of Jesus can be run through the shredder. And this, perhaps, is one of the reasons why this exceptional work, a work which moved even Pius XII, is still ignored and repressed by the official intelligentsia and by clerical modernism. In spite of that, outside the normal channels of distribution, thanks to Emilio Pisani and Centro Editoriale Valtortiano, the work has been read by a sea of people every year by tens of thousands of new readers and has been translated into 21 languages. We at the Maria Valtorta's Readers Group in the US and Australia believe that during the coming era of peace that will arrive after the full consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, Votorta's work will be propagated as strongly, if not more so, by the prophesied coming Holy Pope, 
just as the mystical city of God was promulgated by popes in previous centuries. A very successful enterprise to bring Valtorta's writings to a new audience, particularly the younger generations and those technologically inclined, is the Maria Valtorta app for iPhone, Android, and tablets. This app has been officially endorsed and adopted by the Centro Editoriale Valtortiano, the publisher and worldwide distributor of Maria Valtorta's works. This app is now released internationally with English, Spanish, Italian, and French language versions, with additional language, languages to also come. I help manage the English content, and other volunteers help manage the other languages. Since its launching a few years ago, the Voltorta app has been downloaded by almost 6,000 people who come from over a dozen countries. This app has three features. One, Sunday Gospels for the entire liturgical year, both text and audio. Two, parables. And three, supplemental information. The main feature of the app is the Sunday Gospels. Every Sunday, this app will automatically download the readings for that day. It will display the readings from the canonized Gospels for that Sunday, followed by the passage from the Gospel as revealed to me that corresponds to that Gospel reading. There is also an audio feature where you can listen to these readings. Another unique feature of this app is that there is an atlas map of Israel in the time of Christ that will show you on the map where Jesus was during the Gospel scene. It also lists the name of the location and an approximate historical date based on the chronological research of Thomas Dubay. The Sunday Gospels feature is a great way to read the Gospel weekly and get immersed into the world of Vatorta's visions. The app also contains 100 parables of Jesus, which includes parables from the Gospel as revealed to me, as well as from Vatorta's other published works. Further information about the app is included in the handout you will receive. Archbishop Pierre Giacomo de Nicolo said in his homily on October 15, 2011, for the 50th anniversary of Maria Fultorta's death in the Basilica of the Annunciation in Florence, Italy, quote, the work of Maria Fultorta, which is free from error of doctrine and morals, as noted by multiple parties, recognizes for more than half a century a wide and silent circulation among the faithful, translated in about 30 different languages, of every social class throughout the world and without any publicity in particular. The grandeur, magnificence, and wisdom of the content has attracted numerous good fruits and conversions, even people immersed in the whirlwind of life and far from the Christian faith, but nevertheless yearning to get in touch with solid truths have opened, themselves, opened their hearts to a meeting with the absolute, with God love, and they have found full confirmation of the 2,000-year-old teaching of the church. Every single person on the earth will know the complete truth about this revelation at the general judgment when all things that are hidden will be made known and all truth will be revealed. But it will be too late for this work to help people at that point. If my ebook, interviews, my speech today, and all of my apostolic work merely helped save one soul by leading that soul to read Valtorta's work, all of, this, all of this work is worth it. But my goal is to help as many souls as possible. Jesus told Maria Valtorta, I have given you the living book and the perfect knowledge of me and of my time. Next to the canonical scriptures, I do not believe that there is any other book on the planet that has greater potential to save a large number of souls than this book of Maria Valtorta. Jesus hinted at this in an important and very relevant dictation that he gave to Maria Valtorta about her work. Maria Valtorta said to Jesus in April 1948 that she would even offer up the sacrifice of seeing her work unpublished if such a sacrifice would prevent evil from triumphing. Jesus responded to her, quote, I have always accepted every offering of yours and every sacrifice of yours, but this one, no. My will is otherwise. These desires of yours go against my will, and I cannot accept them. My will is that the work be published, because if it is true that the Holocaust of one creature can do so much to keep the Antichrist from triumphing, 
my word can do much more when spread among the crowds. You could achieve one-tenth, one-hundredth, not even that, one one-thousandth with your sacrifice. The work, that is, I myself who speak to the believers to fortify them, to the lukewarm to inflame them, to the incredulous to make believers of them, to the sinners to convert them, to those against God and to the uncertain, wavering between being of God or against him, who are often weaker and enslaved to certain doctor, doctrines by the cunning, who are really against God or on the way to being so, to make them anew sons of God, can achieve 1,000 times 1,000 and 1,000 times 10,000. What Jesus says is true. His work has the potential to affect 1,000 times 10,000. I am doing all in my power to spread Volturda's writings to English-speaking Catholics around the world. I beseech all of you to please do everything in your power to spread her writings among the peoples of the world in your own countries and respective languages. Thank you and God bless you. Grazie Ingegner Austin, grazie, quindi sono d'accordo con Ingegner Austin che Maria Voltotto è uno strumento fantastico, grazie Ingegner. Applausi.